Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Today we're off to pick up a new truck. As you can see, we've got the empty trailer right now. So uh, we're only a couple of minutes away from uh, where we're picking it up. So we'll continue on, go pick it up and show you what we've purchased. What do you reckon? Got some local foreign fauna on it. Yeah. Mm. Definitely a rough one, guys, that's for sure. Here we go. I'm sorry, this is going to be shaking. Oh, dear. We got this thing cheap. Real cheap. Um, I won't talk too much about it now. We'll wait till it's present day for you guys, but uh, yeah. TD5 um, and it's got the currently the rear air suspension is collapsed so we are riding on the bump stops and it is rough anyway we'll get it on the trailer and um, trailer this thing home Obviously it's a new day now, we're just going to take it for a quick test drive. So the, the story with this is that the gearbox is supposedly not happy. Um, so we'll take it for a drive and we'll see if we can, see what gears we can get it to engage. Um, I'm hoping we'll be able to get it to grab fourth. I've taken it for a quick drive and we can only get one, two and three. So hopefully it can, it'll grab fourth. Um, it's going to be a bouncy ride because the rear air suspension is completely collapsed. We're riding on the bump stops. Um, so it'll be a bit of fun. Anyway, we'll go for a drive around the block and see how we get on. Oh, it just got four. That's a huge one. If we can salvage this gearbox rather than having to change out the gearbox, that'll be such a win because as much as I'm willing to change the gearbox, I would not be complaining if we don't have to. Well, that's a huge win that the uh, gearbox is okay enough to drive. <laughs> not well, but it's okay. Um, so yeah, I'm very pleased about that. Anyway, the next step is uh, giving it a good clean up. As you've seen, it's covered in moss um, and it is yeah, it's been in a paddock for quite some time. So what we're going to do is get some caravan cleaner on it, I think it is, um, and let that soak away for a good 10 minutes or so and then get the water blaster on it and see if we can uh, get this thing tidied up some. Guys, that is looking so much better. Um, definitely, definitely shows some of its other flaws, like the uh, rust that we've got going on on the top of the windscreen. Um, don't know what's going on there, but uh, that's looking worse for wear. The dent over there, but uh, yeah, lot, lot better, way more presentable. Um, that's probably just the first clean. Um, I'll give it another clean another day with some soap and water. Really go over it brush but there's definitely the worst of it all the lichen and the moss removed um, be able to tackle that and then we've got to clean the inside 
But as I say, that's a job for another day, so uh, we'll catch you then. So now that the truck's somewhat clean, the next step is to sort out the sagging rear end. Obviously the air suspension has let go, the pump, airbags themselves, or lines, something like that, I don't actually know. But to be honest, for what this thing's going to be seeing, I'm not interested in keeping it. So we're going to pop coil springs in. It is going to get a lift, but that's going to be later on. First things first, we're trying to sneak this thing through a warrant of fitness. But uh, what we're going to do is just use some Disco 1 rear spring seats and some uh, Disco, Disco 1 rear springs. And um, that'll help us get the truck sitting nice and level and we'll uh, try and get a warrant for this. So I reckon uh, enough talking, let's crack into it. Oh, did that get your shin? No. Nah. Good. Basically what we're going to do, I'm not going to bother filming an awful lot of this because uh, it's pretty basic and you'll see us doing this all when we do the lift. But what we're going to do is uh, lift the chassis up, well that's what we've done. We're now going to take the wheels off, drop the suspension down as low as possible, pull those uh, airbags out and that'll give us as much room to try and get the uh, springs in. Because obviously the springs with no, um, no weight on them, they're quite long and it's going to be a pig to try and get them in. So by drooping the suspension down as much as possible it gives us all the space we can to try get the springs in without using spring compressors, worst case we may have to grab them, but we'll see how we get on. Yep, and then the bottom half just twists undone. Sweet as. And just like that, the old suspension's out. Now we've got the fun part of putting the new suspension back in, so uh, what we've got down here is um, this is where the spring seat goes on and um, these are just they require tapping because they're just holes with no threads so uh, we've got to grab a I can't remember I'll tell you once I've got it but we've got to grab a tap put some threads in there so that we can actually bolt the uh, spring seat down once the spring seat's there obviously we can try and wriggle it around and get the springs in but yeah first thing figure out what size it is and what tap we need. Alright guys, so what we've got here is some M10 by 1.5 bolts. These are actually from the spring retainer kit from uh, Kingpin Design, which is for a different project, but uh, I'm pinching the hardware from it. Um, so yeah, M10 by 1.5 tap and the bolt. And then it's literally just going to be a case of popping this in and uh, threading the holes. And then there we are, we're through. So that's one done. Was that quite hard work? Uh, this wasn't actually terrible. So the next step is to get these springs in. Um, we've disconnected the shock absorber at the um, bottom so that we can try and push the axle down as far as possible but we are restricted by the brake lines as to how far we can droop the axle down. Um, I don't want to bother about disconnecting the brakes because then we've got to bleed them and all that and can't be bothered. Instead we'll push it as far down as we can get with the brake lines still attached and then we're going to use spring compressors to compress the, uh, compress the spring and um, yeah try and shimmy it in there. So we'll, we've actually disconnected the uh, spring seat again, so we'll take that out and it'll give us just a smidge more room to try to get the uh, spring up and in. Alright guys, so as I said I really didn't bother to film much, however we've got it all done and dusted. And we'll just stick our head under here, as you can see. Spring is in. Just did a real quick job. Um, because it's all going to be changes well, when we go to the lift, um, which is not very far away. So, we'll, you know, you'll get to see that um, far more in depth when the time comes. Really proud of Elsa. She did pretty much one side of the truck all by herself, just with me telling her what to do. So, she did really good. Anyway, that's that. We're going to muck around with some wheel and tyre options, which you guys are not going to see yet because I uh, don't want to give everything away. So we're all ready to throw the new indicator in, um, so figured why not have a bit of fun. Ilsa is going to try and do it without any instruction from me. I mean she just coil converted one side of the truck so I'm sure she won't find it too hard but uh, feeling up to it? <laughs> no. <laughs> She'll be fine. Anyway, we'll film and uh, see how she gets on.
So this goes in like so. Possibly like so. Pop that up there. That is really like the Phillips thing that might need to come undone. We'll just see how it works. Yeah, I think that might need to come undone. Thank you. And that can come out. Did you put that there to throw me? Maybe. <laughs> Is that bottom one in? Yeah, it's in. Okay. It's just the whole front end doesn't quite line up on this truck. Oh, is that what it is? <clears throat> yeah, cheap trucks. Is the curve supposed to line up as well? Oh, I wouldn't worry too much. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Sick. And that's plenty tight as well. We'll just chuck that back on. Fi final yeah. touch. So that can throw the next person as well. Yeah. <laughs> Right, so I'll let you guys in on a wee secret. There's actually no bulbs in the uh, indicator because uh, we just wanted to chuck it in so it looks complete for a quick test drive. Bulbs are coming, so they'll go in another day, but <laughs> she did great. Three minutes. Were you timing? <laughs> oh, well, no, the, the camera was telling me how long it was taking. Oh. Righto, guys, so uh, as you can see, we're on the road. Um, we've still got the ace light on obviously because the ace is running dry um, and then the three amigos are on which we'll need to scan it for to see but uh, oh, it drives really well and just the more we use this the better the gearbox is getting it's not grabbing hard at all now and um, the truck moves pretty alright as well I'm wondering if it even has a wee tune on it I'm not sure um, but yeah I'm really really chuffed with, uh, with this so far we're in at about two just under two and a half grand into this truck and it is I'm pretty chuffed with it, so we'll keep driving it and uh, get the get everything nice and hot now that we can actually take it for some uh, decent distance. Try to get a heat cycle through the gearbox, get the truck up to temperature, and uh, yeah, essentially just let it do its thing for a little bit. We made it to the gas station, but I can't find the gas button because it's not in its usual spot. Hmm. Weird. Ah, there we are. Sweet. Well that's uh, the first fill up done um, and we're very close to it being legal, really really pleased with that. Um, anyway, the full heat cycle, the gearbox got up to temperature, engine got up to temperature, everything worked correctly, we've obviously just got those, uh, those codes to get rid of, but uh, yeah, I'm really happy. So we'll cruise back home and uh, yeah, we'll pick this up when we choose to work on it a little bit more. The last big job is the Ace Delete, um, I've got the parts over here which I'll show you, so we've got the pulley in the box here and that replaces the pump, there's your part number for if you're wanting to order one and we've got the new belt that you'll need as well and there's your part number so the ACE pump is the pump just down in there so for those of you who don't know what ACE is, it's a hydraulic ram system on your sway bars um, essentially it's got some sensors up in the roof um, and it senses the sort of roll of the body and um, then the hydraulic rams push down on the loaded up side to keep your vehicle flat through cornering. It's an amazing system, I highly highly rate it. Um, I've had a few Disco 2s um, before the channel and um, I absolutely love it. However, for this thing it's not necessary and the pump or somewhere in the system it is leaking badly. I urge you if you're having the same problem, fix it, it's really worth keeping. However, as I say, for this, it doesn't matter, so we're going to uh, delete it. Um, I'm going to leave everything in for the warrant of fitness, except replace the uh, pump, because the pump itself is um, leaking, but still turning, running the system dry, and it's just not something you want to be doing. So the pulley over there um, replaces it, and essentially acts as an idler for there. 
Um, I don't actually know quite how to tackle this because uh, we needed to go there before, so I reckon we'll just start pulling parts off. We'll take out the, um, I'm assuming we'll take out this section here um, of the intake down to the turbo. We'll uh, pull that out and um, yeah, crack into it. We have it guys, the pump is out and um, got a nice big gap in the bay now. So that is ready for this fella to go on in. The only problem is these are the bolts and obviously this is a lot thinner, this material here, than uh, going through the whole pump down there. So um, I am going to need to find some bolts to suit, um, but yeah, then it's just going to be a case of popping this. Goes in like something like that should sit on the dowels a bit better but it's a bit hard to do with one hand well before I even had an opportunity to grab some bolts I uh, found a wee problem as you can see there's dowels on those two there and there and a dowel there however on the delete pulley there's a indent there and an indent there for the dowels but no dent there so I cannot get the pulley to sit flush up against where it needs to mount to so I'm just wondering whether those wee dowels are able to be pulled out or whether I just uh, grab a drill bit and um, add another I guess recess in there um, yeah bit of a stitch up sweet that's what we need all right guys so an 11 mil drill bit should have us all sorted um, as you can see we'll grab this and in the one of the recessed ones and that fits snugly so we'll just drop it in there and drill it down a wee bit the old one and the new one went just a smidge deep but uh should be fine the old uh, ace pump had two mounting points this one's got three so uh yeah not worried about strength that should have us all sorted, let's go see if it fits. There we go, oh yep, I think. Yep, that'll tap on now, sweet. I could only find two bolts, um, but seeing as the old pump was held on by two bolts, just to get this thing back together, two will do, and then I'll grab a third later on. Um, they are cap screws, um, they're a, 40mm long cap screw, M8 by 1.25 pitch, for those of you who are interested. Um, and also, as a wee reminder for me, when I need to uh, go and buy a third one. So, I'm going to slap these in, and um, then we can start the reassembly. Got the fan back in, start putting the intake assembly back together. But uh, the old field is looking a bit average. But just having to have a spare new field to line around, so figured, hey, why not? Why not treat the truck a little bit? So uh, there we go. Well, obviously I'm all cleaned up now. Um, it was a grubby job, but a good job to have done. Now we just need to tell the computer that um, we've no longer got Ace in the system, so we don't keep getting a warning light coming up on the dashboard. We've also had the three Amigos coming up on the dashboard, so at the same time we'll clear the codes, or we'll at least read the codes and see if we can figure out what's going on there, because uh, it won't pass a warrant if it's got any of those dash lights up. So um, I've got the Nanocom here, um, and we are going to figure it out. Um, I have not used a Nanocom before, this is being borrowed from Matt, um, so yeah, we'll see if we can get it worked out and I'll let you know how I get on. So I'll show you what I did, um, you went Discovery 2, TD5, because that's what this one is, um, and then you want to go to the body control unit, 
And then we want to go to settings. Feel free to skip this part in the video if it doesn't apply to you. And it just does some thinking and then we go, oh what was it, um, instrument pack. And then you can change here from ace, as you can see I've turned ace off. And also, uh, you guys may remember in the last video, oh earlier on in the video we did the coil conversion. So I've turned SLS off as well which is the air suspension system. Um, so that essentially makes the dashboard think that there is no ace and no SLS. So we won't get any of the warning lights for that. So once you've set it to that, you can close back out of it and then you click right settings, um, which I've already done, and then you just leave it plugged in while it, scan, uh, while it writes the new settings to the um, ECU. I also went in and cleared some uh, codes. There was one code um, causing the three Amigos to come up, which was a shuttle valve. Um, so I've cleared that and we'll see if it comes back. If it comes back then obviously we'll have to fix it. However that could be a code from a very very long time ago because this vehicle, I mean I have no idea really the history of it other than it sat in the field for the last couple years. So um, that's all cleared. So I guess from what we'll do now is we will turn the uh, nanocom off and then we'll turn the truck on and take it for a quick test drive. Righto guys, moment of truth, here we go. Wait. Yeah, good. No lights. All right, we'll take it for a quick drive and um, see if we get any dash lights up. But uh, yeah, that's looking real promising. We're back, and I'm very pleased with the result. Took it for a 10k drive, and um, yeah, great news. No dash lights. Um, and yeah, everything seems to be running perfectly. So from here, it's just a few wee tidy up things for the warrant of fitness, like pieces of trim and just. Probably needs another wash because uh, all the spider webs uh, appear to keep coming back. Um, but yeah, it's about ready. Oh, and also I might stick some uh, black paint over where the. I don't know if someone's put like filler or something in the body, but in the sorry in the bumper. But uh, tidy it up. But yeah, it's pretty much ready to go for warrant. I'm super stoked. So uh, yeah, that's all for the uh, upgrades. Anyway. Now to actually explain what's going on with this truck. So the plan with this truck is essentially a vehicle to make content for you guys. Um, I've been on the hunt for a vehicle to make some content with for quite some time. Um, ideally I wanted a Disco 2 TD5 and uh, finally after probably about a year of uh, keeping an eye out, the right vehicle came up. Um, so yeah, it's thanks to you guys that I can do this and um, well, yeah, I've actually had the truck probably three months now. Um, unfortunately, it's kind of coincided with uh, a few other things happening. So uh, while I got it for content, there's not going to be a whole bunch on it, but um, we'll try to keep a fairly steady uh, stream of uh, things coming up. Um, got some really cool plans for the uh, future, but the immediate future is uh, just getting this thing through a warrant of fitness. And um, I've got a few goodies already waiting for it. And um, then we can hopefully do some fun fabrication things with it as well. Something that I can uh, teach you guys things with, and uh, also something that I can... Uh, you know, kind of push my own skill with and um, learn myself. So that's the grand plan. Um, I didn't actually explain at the start, but uh, this vehicle, obviously it had the collapsed air suspension, um, but it had, the, the gearbox had blown up. Um, and then the previous owner had fitted a new gearbox, filled it up with ATF, but not filled the torque converter. And they took it for a test drive. And obviously when the uh, torque converter filled up with uh, ATF, um, the gearbox ran not completely dry, but ran pretty low and um, essentially cooked the gearbox. Um, it's since had more fluid put in it and then through the process of driving it, um, it started to function correctly which has been uh, a massive massive blessing because I really did not feel like doing a gearbox change. But uh, yeah, it seems to be working well so we'll flush the fluid um, shortly. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much the plan with this. There's some really cool projects coming so uh, I'm really stoked and Massive thank you to you guys as well for essentially making it possible. Um, this was purchased with solely um, ad revenue from uh, you guys watching the videos. So it's been very cool. Uh, keep an eye out for the next video uh, where we take this thing for its first time off-road. Um, we've actually just got back from the trip recently and um, I won't give too much away but it didn't go quite as planned. Um, but it would make for a really cool video. Um, so keep an eye out for that by hitting subscribe if you haven't already. Give today's video a like and let me know in the comments down below what you think of this thing. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a junker but it should make for some good times. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you all in the next one. Cheers guys, we'll see you then. How do I open the fuel tank? Because this has not got the button in this right spot.